Now that we have some keyboard detection built into our search functionality, mainly Command-K, let's add a little bit more. What I want to do is to be able to push my down arrow and my up arrow to toggle between the results, and then ultimately click on Return on my keyboard to go to the page for the highlighted result. We'll be adding some more view click handlers to our input field. We already have a couple here, one for at focus, for instance. Let's add some more after the at focus handler. And what I want to handle is at key down of the up arrow dot up. And I also want to prevent whatever defaults might occur. So I'm going to do key down dot up dot prevent and then call a method. And the intention for this is for the search results, I want to toggle up and down and highlight different search results. If I push the down key, for instance, it should go down one result and then highlight that. If I click the up key, as with what I'm trying to define here, it should go up one. Let's say that this is going to call a method that we're going to name highlight previous. And I'm going to copy this and duplicate it and then handle a key down event for the down arrow. So instead of up, I'm going to write in down and we'll still want to prevent the default. Then instead of highlight previous, we'll create a method called highlight next. And then lastly, for a key down event for enter, I want it to go to that highlighted document. Put an at key down dot enter and we'll call a method. Let's name it go to doc. And then we'll pass in a variable into that. We're going to pass indices along to detect which page we're on and then create a route based on that. All right, let's go to the script section. And we'll return more data for a key that we'll call highlighted index. And we're going to default this to negative one. When we start to search for something, we don't want anything to be highlighted right away. We'll only highlight something once we click the down arrow or if you hover over one of the results. So let's scroll down some more and add some more methods. First one that we'll do is highlighted previous and then we'll create one for highlighted next. Okay, highlighted previous. curly brackets and for this if this dot highlighted index which right now by default is negative one when you first start out if that is greater than zero what we're going to do is to change this dot highlighted index and we're going to iterate it down by one minus equals one essentially this is saying if our highlighted index is for instance two and we click on the up arrow we're going to change the index from two to one and what that's going to do eventually is it's going to highlight the third item on the list to highlight the second item on the list. The second item on the list would be at an index of one. All right, this will handle our highlighted previous or clicking the up arrow on our keyboard. Let's add one for clicking the down arrow on our keyboard. In other words, highlighted next. All right, highlighted next. Come to think of it, it's not highlighted. I think it's just highlight previous and highlight next. Okay, highlight next, and then another if statement. If this the highlighted index if this is less than the total results, then what we want to do is increment by one the highlighted index. But we need to find the top for that. So how do we find the ceiling for the index results? Well, let's figure this out. Let's scroll up. And I think one thing that we could do is similar to what I was going to do with the go-to docs with passing along the indices. What I could do is pass along the indices and then the count of the total hits that we have. For that, let's try passing along indices dot hits dot length. That should provide us the ceiling. Okay, let's go back down to highlight next. All right, and we're retrieving basically the result count. Let's type that in here. Now, if this the highlighted index is less than results count, then let's do this operation. This the highlighted index, and then we're going to increment that by one. Cool. Now that we have some keyboard commands to navigate through the search results, we now need to find out a way to highlight those search results. And to do that, what we can do is compare the index of the search result 
to the current index that's highlighted. Let's add another method for that, comma, and let's call this is current index. And we're going to retrieve the index, I assume, for this. Let's pass that in. And curly brackets. And what I think we'll do is do a comparison between the index received and the highlighted index and return either true or false based on the results of that comparison. OK, that's going to look like return an index and then compare it against this, the highlighted index. All right, where should we use this method? Somewhere up in the template. Let's take a look. All right, this whole next link area right here is going to be each individual result. Let's modify this class element to have a highlighted effect if this is the one that should be highlighted. OK, we'll add in colon and then class equals. And let's change the background to be BG blue. And I'm thinking maybe 900 will do. OK, we'll highlight it with the dark blue if the following condition is met. We'll do is current index. Then, of course, we'll pass along the index. All right, and this whole thing right here, it needs to be within curly brackets. Let's add those curly brackets in. And also, it's kind of confusing because we have the index from Algolia, and we also have the index that we could retrieve that tells us the actual index of the result, which is what we want in this particular case, which we're not defining that anywhere. But easy enough, we could include that in the v4 statement. So v4, and then hit, and let's also retrieve the index. OK, cool. There we go. OK, let's save this out and take a look. OK, let's Command-K, and let's type in something. Uh, let's get two results, and then push the down arrow key. Ah, oh, awesome. And then again, it looks like on the upper limit, on the previous side, it hits the top wall, and then doesn't go any further. But if I click on down, you can see that the highlighted effect goes away when I click down right there. Well, that's probably a pretty easy fix. Let's go back into the code real quick, and scroll way down to the bottom here. And I'm guessing under highlight next, result count, obviously we'll want to decrease that by one. Let's save this out and try again. Type in this, two results there, okay. And then down, down, and it should stop right there. Perfect, that's what it's doing. Up, up, down, down, cool. One more thing I want to do, if I hover over one of these items with my cursor, I want my cursor to take priority and then have that hover over effect on that particular item. And then what I want to do from there is to have the down arrow work from that new current highlighted index that I'm basically rating when I hover over one of the search results items. So we can see that functionality is not working right now. Let's go add that in real quick. All right, let's go down in this area. Let's see next link and then our search results. This div right here. On this div that contains our search results, let's add in a mouse over function. At mouse over, this mouse over operation right here, and what happens if we hover the mouse over? We want the highlighted index to change. All right, in this case, we're going to change the highlighted index. And we're going to set that to the index of the results that we're hovering over. Let's just type in index. All right, and then save that out and take another look. OK, let's start typing. Then click the down arrow. All right, we see the first result highlighted. Now I'm going to take my cursor and hover over the second result. And we see that highlighted. OK, perfect. That's exactly what we want. And then from here, the expectation is if I click on the up arrow on my keyboard, then the YouTube example will be highlighted. So let's do that. Awesome. OK, one last thing. If I click on Enter, I want to go to that page of the highlighted search result. And of course, earlier under input, we put the key down dot enter to call this method go to docs. And we haven't defined that method quite yet. Let's define that now. And remember, we're going to be passing along the indices to that. OK, go to docs. I'm just going to copy that, then head down to my methods, then add a new one after is current index. So do a comma and paste that there. And we're passing along the index or indices. I'll just call it the same thing, indices. I'm going to do our curly brackets. And what we'll do is tell a router to go to the page. So we'll use this, and then we're going to refer to nux.router. And we'll be pushing. And I want to grab the object ID for the current highlighted indice because that is equal to the same name that Nux gives that page. Okay, for that we're going to put in indices.
dot hits, and this is going to be an array, and we want to find which position of the array the route name is going to be under. Pass along this dot highlighted index for the position of the array, and then for that hit, we want the object ID. All right, let's give this a test. Perfect. That looks like one more little thing. This stayed open, so if that route changes, we want that to close. Let's go back to our code and make that happen. Then right before computed, let's put watch, and let's watch for a route change. Dollar sign route. And if the route changes, we want this.results to equal false. Let's type in this dot show results equals false. And another nice thing to have too is if the route changes, we also don't want the input to be in focus anymore. So let's do this dot and then call that reference refs dot search input. And what we'll do is blur that. Let's go back and see if we did good. All right, let's click on down and then let's click on YouTube example. And all right, we went to a different page. The results drop down went away and input is no longer in focus.